Hey there. Welcome to Simic Education Online Lessons with the Perfect Tutor. We are looking at a very important topic in civic education, family law. This is something that has to do with the family. So the subtopics that we are going to look at are family, marriage, elements of family law, and marriage as an element of family law. So what is a family? What is a family? A family is a group of people related either by blood or marriage. Related either by blood or marriage. For example, the in-laws are related by marriage. The aunties, the uncles are related by blood. There are four types of families that we have in Zambia. Four. The first one is the nuclear family. This comprises the father, the mother, and children only. That's the nuclear the second one is the extended family, the most common one in Zambia. This comprises the father, mother, children, and other relatives, such as the aunties, the uncles, the nephews, the nieces, and just other relatives. Just a mixture. We call that one as what? An extended family. The third one is the single-headed family. From the word single, that means one. This is a family headed by one parent only. One parent. It's either the mother taking care of the children alone or the father taking care of the children alone. This comes as a result of something like um, divorce, death, which may be caused by accidents or diseases such as HIV and AIDS. The fourth one is the child-headed family. The child-headed family comprises children looking after themselves. The children looking after themselves they don't have parents so they start looking after themselves the elder one takes the responsibility those are the four types of family that we have so now family is brought about as a result of marriage in the garden of eden adam and eve we are married for them to have children, for them to bring about family. That's where family originated from. So marriage is very important. We need to know this. This is simply a legal union of a man and a woman as husband and wife or wives in case of uh, polygamy. A legal union of a man and a woman as husband and wife now in case of polygamous polygamous having more than one wife we call that as polygamous that's why we are putting all wives here in cases of who polygamous that legal union is what we call the what the marriage a marriage is a contract based on four things the first one is the rights the rights are simply entitlements a husband or wife enjoys in the union. The entitlements a husband or wife enjoys in the union. For example, in a traditional African setting, a wife has the right to be provided for by the husband. In a traditional African setting, the wife has the right to be provided for by the husband and the husband has the right to be cooked for and washed for by the what by the wife so they enjoy those entitlements those are the rights the second one uh it's nothing but um, the obligations these are duties a husband or wife performs in the union a husband or a wife performs in the union for example each of the spouses has a duty to take care of the other spouse to defend the other spouse you find your wife being beaten by by, by people or just fighting with someone and then you just pass you go now nah, let her fight is that your wife there is that 
that just just that feeling that develops that comes about wanting to protect her everywhere mm? wanting to to defend her even if she's wrong you say my wife is right see so we call those as obligations as a husband you have the duty to defend your wife as a wife you have the duty to protect your what your husband and defend him obligations the third one is referred to as capacities the capacities are abilities each spouse brings in the union the abilities which spouse brings in the union for example a spouse can bring to the union the ability to provide material requirements material requirements or in the case of the wife the ability to conceive and bear children for the union a man cannot conceive a man cannot conceive see? but here comes a wife a wife a wife who can do what see? who can conceive and this makes up what complete thing of conceiving so the wife comes with a capacity or with an ability to conceive to conceive in some cases some women are not able to provide the material requirements such as food clothes and everything here comes a man with a job he is able to provide everything so a man has come with a capacity or an ability to provide the material requirements so there is a capacities the fourth one are incapacities these are inabilities each spouse brings to the union the inabilities or the incapacities for example a wife who is not educated and not skilled in anything may bring to the union the inability to neither earn a living nor provide material things to the union she's not educated she's not educa educated so she has come with an inability so those are the four things on which the marriage contract is based are we together so let us now look at the elements of family law the elements of what family law here the examiners may bring an essay mention three elements of family law explain five elements of family law they end there that's an essay so we have marriage divorce property settlement maintenance of children and spouse within and outside marriage custody of children after dissolution of marriage adoption of children legitimacy of children succession inheritance of property and the victim support unit these are the elements of what family law the things which are comprised in this topic the family law so we we'll look at this one the marriage as i explained earlier a marriage is a legal union between a man and a woman as a husband and wife or wives in case of polygamy there are two types of marriage recognized under the law of zambia that is statutory marriage also known as civil marriage and the customary marriage what is a statutory marriage this is a marriage which comprises only one wife and one husband for life with an exclusion to others with an exclusion it's a monogamous type of marriage it's a monogamous type of marriage means mono means one so under statutory marriage you are not allowed to marry more than one wife that's our thing a statutory marriage requirements for a statutory marriage these are simply things that you need to do that you need to put in place as you get into a statutory marriage 
The first one is the notice of marriage. You take out a notice of marriage. This is simply a notice that describes the intention to marry made at the registrar of offices. Requirements for a statutory marriage. These are simply things that you are required to put in place as you get into a statutory marriage. The first one is that you need to take out a notice of marriage. This is done at the registrar of marriages. It is simply a notice of intention to marry made on a prescribed form. So it's a form that you need to fill describing your intentions to get married. Are we together? So the notice is published outside the registrar's office for 21 days. For 21 days. After expiry of the 21 days, the couple registers their marriage within three months. The second one is marriage payments. The 1973 Matrimonial Causes Act does not provide any payment. You are not required to pay anything. Unless individuals concerned just want to observe the tradition of paying for marriage and uh, things like that. But under statutory marriage, you are not required to pay anything either as a man or a woman. That's under what step by marriage. But if you want to follow the traditions, you can pay. Age. Parties who want to get married must be 21 years old and above. 21 years old. If a girl is below 21, then she needs a letter from the parents or the guardians that is if she's below 21 and above 16 not below 16 below 21 but above 16 just here in between 16 17 18 19 20 not 21 so if she's below 21 but above 16 then she needs a letter from the parents or the guardians then the next one is the relationship the parties getting involved in marriage should not be related in any way prohibited degrees these are the relationships prohibited by the law to enter into marriage they will refer them to as prohibited degrees some of the prohibited degrees for a man his wife's grandmother his wife's grandmother his his wife's daughter you cannot marry your the daughter to your wife no then this one must be here then his sister you cannot marry your sister the law prohibits that his father's wife no father want to marry <laughs> how is that possible okay his mother's sister and other relationships such as his grandfather's wife, his granddaughter, his sister's daughter, his brother's daughter, the daughters of your brothers. I, I want to marry this one. How is that possible? His father's sister and other relationships which are prohibited by law to enter into marriage. Prohibited degrees for a woman, her brother. Cannot get married to your brother. Father's brother, sister's son, husband's son. Brother's son, mother's husband, husband's uh, grandfather, hmm? her husband's father, her husband's um, son, her husband's daughter's son. These are the prohibited degrees for a woman. You cannot get married to these people. The law prohibits that. Apart from relationship, the next thing is solemnization of marriage. This is the actual wedding now. The actual wedding. So during the wedding, there are rituals that take place there. This involves the undertaking of the vows done by both parties 
in front of the witnesses, the exchanging of the rings and the signing of the register. See? Now, this is very important. The ceremony should take place in a room with open doors. Open doors. Between 0 0.8 hours to 18 hours. Between 0 0.8 hours to 18 hours. This is when you are supposed to conduct your wedding. The last one is marriage certificate. This is simply the evidence of marriage. Copy is kept by the registrar and another copy by couples. The marriage is also registered in the book kept at the council. Mm -hmm. So the marriage is registered in the book kept at the council. Now, the only thing that is bad there is that that book can be searched by anyone who pays the, the search fee. There is a search fee. You go, you pay to the councils, you search. You, you, you have access to that book. You read, oh, these people are married. These people are married. This one is married to this one. You are able to see that. That is under statutory marriage. Statutory what? Marriage. We move on to the customary marriage. This one is very simple. Marriage contracted under the customary practices. The customary what? Practices. Here, there are things which happen like uh, a person can even marry someone chosen by relatives. Your mother will just come, I want you to marry this one. You marry under customary marriage. It promotes polygamy. In customary marriage, you can marry more than one wife. Have four, five, seven. So that's a customer marriage. Requirements for a customer marriage. What things do you do to for it to enter into a customer marriage? This one is very simple and straightforward. The first one is the consent. A consent. This is simply the parents or the guardians giving permission to the parties for them to get married. Okay. You can get married. They have agreed yourself agreed from there you go to marriage payment marriage payment is made by the bridegroom the man getting married to the bride to be who is the woman getting married now this depends on ethnicity the tribes each tribe has got its own price the lalas the members they've got their own prices as well so after the marriage payment we go to Consideration of the spouses. The spouses must be single, male and female. Under customary marriage, require male and female parties. Not the females getting married. Female, female, male, male, no. Under customary marriage, it's male, female. Relationship also applies here. Parties should not be related in any way. But under customary marriage, some ethnics, some tribes, such as the Lalas, say you can marry your cousin. So this just depends on the ethnicity. But the parties shouldn't be related in any way. That is about relationship. Those are the two types of marriages recognized under the law of Zambia. Statutory marriage and customary marriage. Now, there are other unions which are referred to as marriage, but they are not recognized by law. We just call them unions. The first one is religious marriage. Religious marriages, they should be followed by registration. If you perform a marriage, if you conduct a marriage in church, you have a wedding in church, but not registered by the registrar of offices, then that is a void marriage. It's just a union. It is not recognized under the law of what? Of Zambia. So you need to register to the local councils for your marriage to be considered. You need to register so if you just do it without registering though you have done it 
in a religious way, in a religious manner, it won't be recognized under the law of what? Of Zambia. That's how it is. There is a process that is involved when conducting a marriage in church. There is a what? A process. The first thing is the announcement of the marriage bands. The announcement of the marriage bands. Here the church priest informs the church or the elders informs the church to say there are two parties who want to get married. The church members has got time to express their views. Any church member within the period of 30 days that's for the Catholic. I don't know other churches. For the Catholic, it's 30 days. They give 30 days. Within 30 days, a church member can go to the church priest and express his or her own view about the parties getting involved in marriage. Are they eligible? Or is it okay for them to get married? If there is a proper reason for the parties not to get into marriage, you are free to go to the church priests and inform them of that reason. Say, so I think they should not get into marriage because of this and this. That's why you're given that period of time. The church prays for the couple. Then during the wedding ceremony, it should be conducted between 06 hours and 18 hours in a building with open doors in a building with what open doors this is under religious marriage another union is known as the cohabitation cohabitation is also a union regarded as marriage but it is not recognized under the law. Are we together? It is not recognized. This is when parties decide to live together without the consent of parents or the guardians. They do not even know that uh, our child, our daughter is in Mufulira with a man. They don't even know. That is called cohabitation. The third one is the void marriage. A void marriage is simply a marriage without a legal standing right from the beginning. Reasons for that, lack of parental consent. If a man is under 21 years old, you try to stop them from getting married, they will, they will insist. So they will get into marriage, but that will be a void marriage. It won't be recognized by law. Because the law says 21 years old. Prohibited degrees. You, for example, you are a man, you marry your sister. You are a man, you marry your sister. That is a void marriage. That is a void marriage, not recognized by law. Non publication of bans in church. Bans, we said these are announcements. So they didn't make announcements in church today to say you are not getting married. So that becomes a void marriage because people do not know that you are getting married. Those are some of the reasons for a void marriage. A void marriage. The last one is avoidable marriage. A voidable marriage is simply a marriage invalidated by the court of law. It was valid. It was valid. But it has become invalidated by the court of law reasons for that why if the child born is not the husband's child there comes the wife with a pregnancy gives birth to a child or to a baby boy test the dna for the baby test the dna for the father not corresponding the dna are not corresponding. The court can simply invalidate that marriage to say this is something else. Cannot continue being together. Two, a spouse contracting STIs elsewhere. When getting married, both spouses were 
negative. For example, let's take it, uh, for instance, HIV and AIDS. When getting married, both spouses were HIV negative. All of a sudden, the wife or the husband becomes positive. Where have we gotten it from? That may lead to invalidating the, what, the marriage by the court. Three, if the marriage is not consummated due to impotency. If the marriage is not consummated due to impotency. Impotence is simply the inability of a man to get an erection. The inability of a man to get an erection. We call that as impotence. Then we go to will refusal to consummate marriage by any party. Let me explain this word here. Consummate. To consummate in marriage simply means making the marriage complete by having sexual intercourse. Making a marriage complete by having sexual intercourse. So consummation is applicable to both civil and customary marriage. So now we are saying importance here. So the man is not able to get an orgasm or reach an erection to have an erection the court can invalidate that marriage the court can invalidate that marriage then the next one is will of refusal will of refusal here is because of importance because of importance but as for this one is will of refusal to consummate marriage by any party it's either the husband refusing to have sexual intercourse with the wife or the wife refusing to have sexual intercourse with the, wife, the husband. The court can invalidate that marriage in that case. Mental disorder by any of the parties. Mental disorder can lead to invalidation of the, what, the marriage by the court of law. Those are some of the things that lead to uh, avoidable marriage. Avoidable marriage.